These are my predictions for the 2016 edXL C3 paper. So first of all, please remember that I am not an examiner. I do not have any inside secrets, I do not know any tips or any hidden patterns or anything that's actually going to be on the paper. I've just sat down, gone through all the past papers, had a really good think about it, looked at the examiner's reports and these are my guesses because they are just guesses of what's going to be on this year's paper. But please, please, please remember to revise everything thoroughly. Don't just do what I say here and miss out other stuff. So the first place I looked was the examiner's report because this lets us see what the examiners are thinking and every single year they bring up balancing equations. You have to know how to do this really really well. Now this is E3, this is kind of like pre-A level so you're going to expect the examiners to throw some really really hard ones in there for you. Do not think this is like C1 where the answer was two pretty much all the time. These are going to be some nasty ones that also are going to expect you to take a word equation and turn it into a symbol equation and vice versa. So you're going to need to know your common formulas of ions and how to make an ionic formula, say for a salt. So the big questions in last year's paper were on electrolysis and water. So we can expect them to come up again this year, but probably, and it's just a probably, not as the really big questions. So expect short questions, factual questions about water and electrolysis. So we're thinking half equations, we're thinking the difference between scale and scum, potentially some of the ethical issues to do with water Water, the government adding stuff to it and things like that but not necessarily a big big question like there was last year. We can expect there to be a lot of maths especially your titration calculations. Now the trend in exams is to harder maths questions and giving you less steps to work through it in. So instead of doing part A, part B, part C just throwing the question at you at beginning. So make sure you know your maths, make sure your titration calculations are spot on because these are the things the examiners really really like to test you on. They could throw a really hard question in here to see if they can pick out the A star students from everyone else. Two other areas they could throw really hard questions in, trying to find those A-star students, are organic chemistry. Now, there are loads of different sections they can put a really, really tricky question in. And when I say really, really tricky question, this is sort of stuff I set as extension for my classes. It's not on the spec, but a really good student will be able to cope with these questions. A really good student won't get flustered, will think about it and be able to work it out for themselves. So this is an area they could put it in. You're going to need to know all of your organic chemistry really, really well. Naming things, drawing things, uses and properties of things, the dangers of things. And the other area that you could really, really test you on is your ammonia and your equilibrium question. Now, you've probably only seen the ammonia equation and been asked questions about that. How would you be able to cope if they gave you a different equation and ask you an equilibrium question about that? Because they could do. And this is the way they could differentiate those A star students from the top. They could choose to make that question really, really tricky. You're going to need to know your ethanol really well, so coming back to organic chemistry, but lots, lots more about ethanol, because this is a big part of C3. So how it's made, the ethical issues perhaps between growing um, sugar cane for use in ethanol instead of use in food, lots of things they can ask you about here, and don't forget all of your reactions. The last area they're going to ask you a tricky question in is the identification of ions. Now this is always going to be a tricky question because they're not just going to say what is the result for this. They're going to make you play detective. They're going to give you say a scenario and ask you to work out a test for ions, ask you to try and just play detective. So you can't just learn the results for testing all the ions. You have to be able to apply it as well and that's where it becomes a bit tricky. So. C3, the big, big things I think are going to test you on are your organic chemistry or your equilibria because they need to work out who the best students are. 
so good luck guys i know how hard you've been working because i get loads of questions and comments from you any help you want just put it in the comments below and i'll do my very very best to answer you as quickly as i can really proud of how hard you've been working guys well done hey guys thanks for watching i really hope you found this video helpful if you want to say thank you or if you want access to my online classroom priority video requests or to deal the books i'm publishing you can pop over to conos or keep up to date with everything on my website don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything and if you follow me on twitter or like me on facebook you'll get all the updates there thanks for watching guys i really hope you found this helpful Anything else you need, any other help you need, just let me know below.